Hey guys, good evening. Uh, so we're in our second week of the God of Hope series. And to start us off, I want you to think about somebody with extraordinary faith. And then I want you to take that and think about a time where they faced hardship, but continue to trust in God. Is, is there anything popping up in your mind? I think, I think there, is, there is for me. Uh, I recall a time when my dad suddenly just lost his job. My family had moved into a new house. They were paying college bills for kids. They had made a few other investments all kind of within the year right before this happened. And then, boom, uh, his primary way of making money was gone. And all the way to support those things was gone. But that didn't stop my dad from praising the Lord. His first instinct was to go to the Lord in gratitude for what he had and pray for peace in an uncertain time. Because he knew that God would take care of him despite his circumstances. And so today, that kind of transfers us in nicely. To that we're going to talk about Apostle Paul who similarly faced hardships during his life, but still trusted in the Lord. And so the first point we want to talk about is essentially kind of Paul's conversion. And so to start, I want you guys to turn to Acts chapter 9, verses 1 through 9. Go ahead and pause the video, read the verses, and then come back. Welcome back. So in these verses, we get the context for who Paul was before Christ. Paul was a Pharisee, which was a group of religious elites in Israel that strictly followed the law of Moses. They opposed the early church and greatly disliked Christians. He essentially was a religious terrorist. Um, he was imprisoned. He imprisoned, persecuted, and killed Christians. And in previous chapters, the Bible even says that he ravaged the church, meaning that he just tore through and devoured at any point that he could for the early Christian church. But with all that, it's kind of safe to say that Paul was probably not the first person and more likely the last person that the early church thought would become its spokesperson. Even more so just getting to know Christ that would be seen of the miracle within itself. And so this is not even really a new theme, right? We can think back if you were with us earlier in the year, uh, back to Moses. Before Moses was called to go lead the Israelites out of Egypt, he was a murderer. He was a murderer that ran off into the wilderness out of fear, but God still chose to use him. So this, this theme of using broken people is not new when we look at Paul. So this passage greatly sticks out to me for two primary reasons. One, it just really humbles me. So sometimes when I can see somebody doing drinking they're not supposed to, or I hear somebody talking about drugs, I can pretty easily get in the mindset that I'm better than them, or somehow that I'm more worthy of taking up God's word and deserving of his love. But that's simply not the case. We are all sinful. We are all fallen. And I have no right to think of myself more highly than anyone. The second thing that this passage reminds me of is of God's grace. In the same way that it humbles me, the, this passage shows me that God is capable of saving me even in my darkest moments. So when I feel like I've somehow committed too much sin or gone beyond God's grace, this passage reminds me that that's a lie, that I'm wrong in that statement. And similarly, that would be wrong for any of you because that's just not how God's love works. It's unconditional and he's always running after us. And this passage in Acts is proof of that. So kind of going back to Paul, now that we understand where Paul came from, Let's go and look uh, kind of further in Acts chapter 9. We'll go to verses 10 through 16. Go ahead and pause the video again, read that, and then come back. So here we see that Ananias, Ananias, a man of God, uh, was kind of told, he's like, hey, Saul's coming in. He's going to be in this place. He's going to be praying, uh, and you should go to him. And Ananias is fearful to do this, and he's like, God, do you know who this man is? Do you know his reputation? Do you know what he's done to your people? God just kind of silences it with, telling him, this is my chosen instrument. And so in, in kind of obedience, Ananias goes and he fulfills his role. And this, what does this tell us? This tells us that God has a purpose for our lives even after salvation. So, and I don't know if that's really something you've thought about before. I know when I was younger, I kind of wished the rapture would just happen right then, right? Uh, I didn't want to go to school. I didn't want to deal with the stresses of life. And I would just think, well, I know Christ. So let's just go to heaven where a place that I know will be better right now. But that's just really not how that works. Salvation is not the end of the story. God asks that we go to others and share the gospel so that we can save more people. Our own fire has kind of been lit, and it's not our job now to just go up to God. It's to go light the fire, the fire of others. And this is known as the Great Commission, which comes from the scripture in Matthew 28, 18. And this is exactly what Paul did. His mess, his testimony, it became his message. God using Paul in this way shows how powerful our testimonies can be. Simply sharing what God has done, how he has changed us, can be a great starting point in sharing the gospel. And while 
we and kind of on this point, I also want to make sure we're not confused on something. I want to make a distinction between God using someone's sin and God causing someone to sin. God did not cause Paul to sin to then use him later. He did not have Paul be the or commit the evil acts that he did so that he would have this powerful testimony. Rather, God used the horribleness that came from Saul's life, who would become Paul, of course, and took that for God's own good, for his own good. And so he took Paul's issues and made them his tools. Just wanted to highlight that before we kind of moved on. But let's now discuss the hardships that Paul faced during his journey to kind of fulfill the Great Commission and during his time as God's chosen instrument. So if you'll go ahead and turn to 2 Corinthians 11, verses 23 through 28. Pause the video again and then come on back. <clears throat> so welcome back. Let's unpack that scripture. So oftentimes, you know, well, I guess first off, we just saw all of that Paul went through. He was, he was whipped, he was stoned, he was shipwrecked, and many more. But we can kind of get caught up in the idea that Christians will share the gospel and talk about what a wonderful plan God has for a person's life. Despite this being true, it's lacking some details. Though when someone has been saved, that their eternal destinies become secure, that they're eventually going to end up in a place that's more joy-filled than we could ever possibly imagine. But that place is not earth, and our time's not done yet. We are not really promised anything wonderful during this time. In fact, in John 16, Jesus even says that we will face struggles on the earth and that we should have peace and take heart because Jesus has overcome the earth. So Christ promises us strength to endure these hardships, and we're still recipients of fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, etc. Uh, but our circumstances are not always going to be fine and dandy while living for God. Now, I would like you to take some time to discuss kind of how living the Christian life is hard for you. Go ahead and pause the video, discuss with your group, and then come on back. Okay. Um, finally, let's look at kind of Paul's goal and attitude towards these hardships that he's faced while living out his role. So go ahead and turn to Acts 20, verse 24. Pause the video one more time and then come on back. So this is Harris Creek's verse of the year for the whole church. Some of you may have memorized it back in January, uh, but I think it's especially relevant in the context of Paul's life. Despite being tortured, shipwrecked, and nearly murdered on multiple occasions, Paul never gave up. He held his eyes on Christ and was empowered by that to continue onward. This is really hard for us to fathom in our culture because Christians are not oppressed in the U.S. like they were in Paul's time. But we should use his testimony as an encouragement for ourselves to live out the Great Commission. <clears throat> we should strive to have that same fervor that Paul did. The important things are not what we wear, not what we drive, not how much money we make or how many friends we have, but rather the fulfillment of our mission and the Great Commission and how we prioritize that in our daily lives. Kind of focusing one more time on Paul, we're not entirely sure on the circumstances of his death, but we know it happened around 60 AD when Emperor, Emperor Nero began persecuting Christians more harshly. And we know that Paul continued his mission until his death. As a final discussion point, I want you guys to think about whether or not you want to strive to be like Paul. Like genuinely, do you want to have that faith? Do you want to be ready to serve like he was ready to serve and endure the hardships he was ready to ready to endure. So kind of talk about why or why not. And then finally, afterwards, go ahead and discuss how your life would change if your greatest desire was to be closer to Jesus. But once you guys do that, that's more or less all we have for today. So thank you for listening and have a wonderful Sunday evening.